All right, so my testimony is really um, not growing up in a church home. I, if if anything, I mean, my parents were amazing. They they did everything that they had to do to make me have an amazing life, but neither of them um, neither of them grew up in a church home either. So it's not like they knew how to teach me anything like that. Um, my mom grew up Catholic, um, but didn't continue the faith later on in life. It was more forced upon her, so it wasn't like she actually wanted to be in a church like that, but she always believed in God. Um, my dad, on the other hand, had no type of church background. Um, so when I was a kid, I've always had an interest in God and believing, and it all happened when, I mean, I would church hop with a friend, so I took myself to church, and it wasn't like I was learning at a spectacular amount because of the very limited time that I would go. Um, but when I did go, my parents were very supportive. They would uh, always ask me how it went, like when I came back home. Um, and it was always difficult for me just because I would go to church with my friends and their families and, and they would do things as families in the church and then I didn't have mine. I mean, my parents, they never came. They never really asked to come and I had them come with me one time and um, it was just, it was different for them. My dad is so, so caught up on the fact that um, churches really judge your outward appearance and my dad is covered in tattoos. Tattoos are just kind of like a thing in our family. It's, it's, it's normal for us and he just always feels like he's being judged in um, a church aspect like that. So uh, I decided to go on my college visits. And so I wanted to go to the University of Arkansas, Fort Smith. So I got in contact with one of their volleyball coaches and I started talking to them and I came to a tryout. And during this tryout, I found out that my best friend had killed himself. So I, I instantly shut down. I mentally didn't care anymore. And um, that really was a big impact on my life um, beside the fact that he was gone and that I didn't understand and I couldn't comprehend why something like that would happen um, the trial obviously didn't go well and so I ended up leaving there um, no offer to play anything like that so um, 10 days later I ended up getting a um, an email from coach Moore and never heard of Sagu I've uh, like I said, didn't grow up in a church home, and the, the churches that I did go to were Baptist churches, so I didn't even know what AG was, and um, so coach contacted me. I came, and I followed up with a visit here, and so on my visit, my visit was terrible. I didn't have anybody to escort me around or show me anything. I was with my parents the entire time, but the good parts about my visit were amazing. I ended up going to chapel service with my mom and my dad, and um, after the chapel service, my dad was touched in a crazy way, something that he has never experienced. And so after, we ended up having dinner with Coach Moore. And in that, in that time, my dad asked Coach Moore to kind of walk him through salvation and how coming to Christ was. And so we sat there for a few hours, and my dad ended up accepting Jesus that day. And um, at that moment, like I knew Sagu was where I needed to be. Um, so I committed here and because I committed here my freshman year, I got to go on a mission trips to Costa Rica and that was one of the most impactful times of my life. I ended up finding out who I was in Christ and I was scared. I was scared to go on this mission trip just because I knew like where I came from and I didn't know much about God. I mean, I knew the basics. I knew what you needed to know, but I didn't feel like I was equipped enough to be able to take the word to somebody else. And God really showed me that that wasn't the case, that he could use me and that, um, that you really didn't have to know a bunch about him. You just had to really know that he loved you, what he did for you, and you just had to use your love and show it to people that didn't know him. And so um, I ended up making some of the most amazing friends there. Um, we're actually going back here in um, May. And so um, after the trip, I ended up talking with Coach and. I'd accepted uh, Christ into my heart when I was like six, um, just due to the fact that I was going with um, my friend and her family, and they had an altar call, and 
I knew what it was and I knew that's what I wanted, but I had never been baptized. And so I sat with coach for a long time and I asked him if he would have the honor of baptizing me. So my freshman year here at SAGU, I got baptized by coach Moore and uh, he's just, he's played such an influential part in my spiritual growth process and how it works like that. And I mean, I don't know if you have come from a different background or someone that didn't know what Christ was or, I mean, didn't come from a church home or trying to find Christ by yourself. Um, but I'm telling you, it's worth it to step out and actually ask somebody to go and talk to them. I mean, talk to them like you're talking to me. It's just, it's changed my life in so many ways just because, I mean, my outlook on life, I used to have really bad anger problems and and ever since I brought Jesus into my life honestly there's just been a peace in my heart it's I'm so much slower to anger and even when I do like get angry I mean I stop I pray and God will take that from you it's just the little things that God comforts you in that without him you don't have and I just want to encourage you to continue to talking to people encourage you to to find Christ and just learn more about him it's, it's an amazing experience and it's one that, that I will never regret.